how to cook a steak in an instant pot and not just any instant pot but the instant pot duo crisp and air fryer i've had this device for a little over a week now and i've done a lot of recipes in it hey i love it but i haven't yet got to use the broiler plate and so there sits a usda prime uh ribeye steak and we're going to use the meter uh, where I probe it with a wireless device to read my temps out so I don't have to take the lid off on and off a bunch to give us ideas of how long it takes to cook about a one inch steak. And that's what we're about to do. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Let's cook a steak in an instant pot. Okay, so I've got the steak sprayed with ghee and salt and peppered. I've had the steak uncovered in the refrigerator most of the day. And just to help it dry out a little bit. And then I've had it sitting out of the refrigerator for, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. The thing I'm doing different on this, because I normally use avocado oil. Well, ghee, I found, is only a few degrees below the smoke point. Uh, avocado's like 550. I think ghee is like 500. So plenty high. And it has a butter taste. I think it'll work better on a steak and, and on a lot of things. So I'm going to start using it in certain situations. I'm also using this meter block. And it ha you see it right here. And it shows me the temp, internal temp of my steak and the ambient temp. That's the black part right there, which tells me the temperature of this chamber. So that'll give us an idea what the chamber is in case we want to know. But mainly, it is just to give me an indication of where I'm at on that steak or honestly anything I'm cooking that I use it in because my thermo pen gets the final say. A lot of times it's hard to hit the center, but anyhow, I can once that gets where I want to start checking it, I'll start raising the lid and looking at it with this. I've already sprayed this basket and the liner, by the way. I think that helps a lot because that liner will clean up a lot easier with anything that drops in there with that with anything you put in there and i'm using the ghee now i will say this is the i'm using the air frying basket and i've sprayed and i'm using this uh i'm using the air frying basket and the broiler tray they call it or plate i don't know what they refer to it as but anyhow it goes if you see that ridge right here it just sits right on top of that and that makes it uh, hold it closer to the element and just helps it broil. So, we're gonna put that in right there. Everything's oiled and ready. I'm wondering how much trouble I'm gonna have getting this steak in there from that probe. And I may have to go a little further. Another reason that I use a thermopin, because I'm past where I wanna be. I had it sitting where I wanted it, but anyhow, it's not, it's not a big deal. It's just to monitor, you know, uh, uh, just kind of monitor that temp. So when it gets where, near where I want to be, I use this. Anyhow, we're going to put this on. And we're going to hit broil right there. And it's set for 32. I'm going to leave it because it doesn't matter because we're going by that. And then we may use that time. In fact, I'm going to set it to, a, to 30. That way we'll have an idea when you look at this and I take it out and say it's done, we'll subtract from 30 to see how long it took but now you can't change the temp on broil you cannot you can change the time as i just did i'm gonna put it back on 30 again but you you can't change the temp so anyhow now you know on that and uh we're gonna start watching this you can see the ambient's already up to 103 and we're off and running so i'll be back in a minute okay so we're just past a midway point at 109 almost 110 so I want to see if it's ready to flip or if it needs flipping. Well, we're going to flip it to see if it needed. It's the only way I know how to do it. So we're going to lift that lid. I'm going to set it right there. And it looks excellent and, and sounds good too. We're going to go ahead and flip it because I, I don't know what the bottom side's doing. And there's no way of knowing without flipping. And it needed flipping. So that, that worked great. So I'm going to make that go in a little bit further. We're good right there. And put the lid back on. And it will automatically start back up. So, and if you notice, well, I didn't show you before I raised that lid. It was 402 degrees on the, on the chamber, this part, on the ambient. It was uh, 402. So they're 400, they're, 
their temp readings, as far as I'm concerned, and every time I've looked at them, they've been really close. Anyhow, let that finish a few more minutes and get a little closer to our 130, and I'll start checking it with the thermopan. Be back. Okay, so just so you know what's going on, it's wanting me, the, the meter probe is wanting me to remove it from heat. And that's because it knows if I pulled it right now, that carryover is going to take it to 130. So it wants me to get it out of there before I overcook it. But I haven't even tested it with this, and I don't think it's brown on the other side just yet. But we're going to take a look, and I'm going to go ahead and do a thermopin reading. And it may need to come out. We'll just see right quick. And you know what? It doesn't look bad. In fact, it looks good. <laughs> That's, if, if it's ready, I'm good with that. Especially the way the other side looks. You know, I'll just serve the other side up. That's how I would do it normally. Let's see what we get right here. And it is 130. 130. Well, I'm almost at the bottom side. You have to kind of go real slow and check. And that might be done. I want a little more brown on this side, but not much. Yeah, I ought to pull it. I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to let it go for another two minutes. We're going to pull it at nine minutes right here, which will be uh, 21 minutes cook time, and uh, let it go at that. Now, I'm going to overshoot my targets a little bit, but I don't think it'll be bad. We'll see. Okay, we're at 10. That's, I can't stand it any longer. I, I think it's right. I don't want it to be... I want a medium rare. That's how I eat my steaks. So, we're going to... Look at it, and like I said, I'm going to try and show you both sides without making a tremendous mess in my floor, but we're going to do it. There is that side, and there is that side. Nothing wrong with either one. I kind of like that side a little better. We'll see. I'm going to let it lay there and let it rest a minute, and, uh, well, about, I'm going to let it rest seven or eight minutes, and we're going to cut it up, see how it looks. Be back. All right, my meter probe is telling me I am overcooked, and I'm now medium rare, and I'm at 140. But if you look right here, and I'm going to go in about a quarter inch. There you go, 128, 129. And that's because I could not put that where I wanted it, right here. So I'm going to remove it, depending on how hot it is. And we're done with that. We're fixing to cut it. It's probably rested right now about five minutes, but we're close to cutting it. I'm going to cut it up. And uh, we're going to see how it looks. But you can see, it's not a bad looking cook. I think it's going to be fantastic. We're going to be back in a second. All right, let's cut it up and see how it looks. And we'll start out here. Because I think uh, it's going to be perfect all the way through. But we're going to see. And we'll go a little bit further. Well, let's just cut it all up. So, right there. I mean, look at that piece. Uh, I, if that's overcooked, in the, not to me. I'm trying to get some light on it, but I think you see, that's a pretty close to a perfect medium rare. That, that's what that is. And, uh, or at least at, at, at the far end, medium. Or, other words, a 130 degree steak. So anyhow, I'm about to put a little salt and pepper on, a little more salt and pepper, and I'm going to eat some of that, but... Anyhow, I'll be right back. Okay, so just a little bit of finishing salt and a slight bit of cracked pepper. And it's going to be excellent. And I'm going to try it just a little bit. And I would, by looks of it, and it is, it's excellent, like any ribeye steak is. And that method right there, is as good as any I've got. It's way simpler than a lot of them I got. Uh, you know, there may be some ways that uh, that are as good, but I think it'll get much better inside the house and all the above. This ghee, in the beginning, and I didn't mention it, but in the beginning of cooking a steak, I could smell the butter, and and that's the first thing I smell before I smell the steak. You can kind of smell the butter. You can taste the butter. I, I think it's going to be perfect for a lot of items. So, anyhow. Hey, I appreciate, appreciate y'all watching my video. I'll definitely put my big head, if y'all don't mind, to touch and subscribe. And like and share the video if you don't mind that also. Again, it's, it's, I've had it a little over a week. It's going to be the biggest thing. There's, I think it's going to be the biggest Christmas gift item there is. It's going to be hard to get. I really think if you want one, 
you may need to consider buying it. Now, I'm not a salesman for I, I'm not, I'm just, this is my honest opinion. I think this will be the hottest item of the year. My opinion. Y'all have a good night. Come back to see me. Bye-bye.